Hello everyone. Let's continue with example 8.5 and today we're going to do cases 2 and 3. طيب. So, case 2. The reactor is operated adiabatically. Okay, so when the reactor is operated adiabatically, what do you have to do? Well, simply, all that you have to do is to put u, oops, to put u equals to 0. Tamam, and then use the dt by dv equation. Tamam. So, it's not any more isothermal operation. So, we have to use the dt by dv equation. So, no more. No more this equation. No more this equation. Tamam. And because the operation is adiabatic, so you have to set u, the overall heat transfer coefficient, to zero. Okay. So, let's see how the solution will look like. So the conversion still increasing down the length of the reactor. However, we achieve only 16% compared to 50% conversion when we operated isothermally. Why is that? Well, simply because of the rate of reaction, right? Remember the rate of reaction in case one varied between or let's say varied between 65 down to 25 mole per second per cubic meter however however in this case the rate of reaction is decreasing from around 65 mole per second per cubic meter all the way down to as you can see around here let's say less than 10 less than 10 yeah way less than 10 maybe 5 mole per second per cubic centimeter so that's the reason lower rate of reaction but why rate of re lower rate of reaction well simply because we are operating at lower temperature in the previous case we're operating at 1035 kelvin now it starts at 1035 kelvin but drops down to around 960 kelvin why is that because the reaction is endothermic and operated adiabatically since the reaction is endothermic the reaction mixture would absorb heat from the surrounding from the reaction mixture itself and since you are not compensating for this absorbed quantity of heat you are not supplying and heat from outside the system therefore the temperature will drop Okay, that's what happening. So obviously you don't want to operate this reaction adiabatically. Type. Let's go to case three. The reactor is surrounded by a heat exchanger where the heat transfer coefficient is 110 joule per square meter per second per kelvin. And the temperature of the heating medium, Ta, is constant at 1250 Kelvin okay so actually case 3 is the general case so we're going to use all the equations that we have derived from the for the general case and we're going to add the following equation which is Ta equals 1250 Kelvin okay Okay, so let's see how the solution looks like. Okay, now the conversion has increased from 50% in isothermal case to 57%. Okay, and of course, this has to do with the rate of reaction. Remember, again, isothermal case, the rate of reaction starting at around 
65, 66, and going down to 25 units. Okay, but now still starts of the same, of course, still starts at the same value, but decreases down to around 38 instead of 25, or around maybe 35 instead of 25 mole per second per cubic meter. Why is that? Must be the temperature. So let's go and look at the temperature, T. So do you see the temperature profile here? Which looks like a Nike logo, just do it. Okay, so you can see the temperature starts at the entrance temperature, which is uh, 1035 Kelvin, and slightly decreases at the beginning, and soon after that, it shoots up to higher temperature. So in general, the reactor is operated at temperature higher than the temperature of the isothermal case. And therefore, this explains why the reactor is operating at higher rate of reaction, which leads to higher conversion, which is 57%. Right, but let's explain this. Let's explain this behavior of temperature. In order to explain the behavior of temperature, we'll need to plot the localized heat transferred and the localized heat absorbed by the reaction according to the equations that we explained at the beginning. So, as you can see, both values are positive and therefore we can compare the values. At the beginning, at the beginning, we have the localized heat transfer is lower than the localized heat absorbed. So the localized heat absorbed by the reaction is very high, as you can see here. Why is it very high? Because the rate of reaction is very high, because the concentration of air is very high. As the reaction progresses, the concentration of A decreases, and therefore the rate of reaction decreases, which results in a uh, localized heat absorbed value, which is lower than the localized heat transfer. The localized heat transfer maintains its value at high value because Ta is maintaining its value. So, mom, toward the end, little bit, the localized heat transfer reduces. That's because the delta T becomes slightly lower compared to the delta T at the beginning, but in general, the localized heat transfer is a, stands at a good value. But the localized heat absorbed by the reaction decreases because of the decrease in the rate of reaction due to the decrease in concentration. Therefore, therefore at the beginning, at the beginning you can see because the localized heat absorbed is more than localized heat transfer, the localized heat absorbed, that means the reaction mixture is absorbing heat from itself, at a rate that is larger than the rate, what, the rate at which I'm supplying heat to the reactor. Therefore, the temperature will drop. However, soon after that, the localized heat absorbed becomes less. So the rate at which heat is absorbed by the reaction mixture due to reaction is less than the localized heat transferred to the reactor. So I'm, I'm transferring heat to the reactor at a rate that is higher than what the reaction mixture is absorbing. That's why the temperature continues increasing. Okay. What else? Also, evaluate the total heat transferred to the reactor, Q dot. So we want to calculate the Q dot total. How? Using the algebraic form of the energy balance. Again, we discussed this at the beginning of the problem of this example. So you use the algebraic equation. And when you do this, but of course this time, T does not equal T naught. So you cannot cancel out the first term. Okay, so you can see the values here. This is how much heat transferred to the reactor. And it is more than how much heat transferred in the hydrothermal case. That explains why the temperature shooted up. So here, we provided 
the heat required for the reaction to proceed at constant temperature. But here, we provided the heat required for the reaction to process at constant temperature, but a little bit more by 300 joule per second. For that little bit more of heat that we, I added caused the temperature to increase. Okay, how else? I want to calculate Q dot total. Well, by integrating this term. So you can see that we all know that delta delta Q dot simply equals Q dot double prime delta A, right? Tamam, or you can say Q times A times delta V. What is Q dot prime? It's the heat flux U times T outside, that is TA minus T inside A times DV. Tamam, so if you integrate this term where at the beginning q dot is zero right tamam so when you integrate from volume zero to the volume final you will get the value of q dot total of course how do you do this you can write this equation this way i should say well Rewrite it again. U times A times T A minus T. Come on. So when you integrate this term, you can get Q to that. Okay, how else? Delta T log mean. T delta beta delta T log mean. So you know that Q dot equals u times a times delta t log mu that is from heat transfer course right tamam or instead of this guy you can write a times v okay and you know how to calculate delta t log mu and then you can compare okay so in case of the algebraic equation the value was this much use the integration exactly the same value right however when you do delta t log mean the value is a little bit lower there's a some error why is that because the delta t log mean cannot be used when you have chemical reaction but anyway the value is not bad that bad okay then we have some optional questions that you can solve at home okay with this we reach the end of case three We'll see you soon with case four and five.